Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. The sun hangs heavy over the Valley of the Setting Sun. The Valley of the Setting Sun is a Scion 6 edition game set in Phoenix, Arizona, and starring Craig as Sir Nicholas, Slavek as Jesse, and Mitch as Gary. Join our heroes as they adjust to their new powers and navigate the tangled roots of the Scion community. Will our heroes be able to achieve their destinies, or will their bones be left to dry under the desert sun? You can reach out to us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM, or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night, where you can find a link to our Discord. So the two of you look across and you see the woman sitting next to James, uh, ice, bl- ice blonde hair, and she has a resemblance to Leah. It doesn't look quite like her, but you can definitely tell it's like a familiar resemblance. Maybe it's her sister. Yeah. Weren't, th- weren't they two of them, storyteller? Uh, so at the uh, when you last, last, last saw Leah a couple of sessions ago, you saw the, the three, looked like three figures were there when you left the like, club. You saw mm-hmm. Leah clearly, and one looked, sort of had like, the, the guise of... Uh, Mel on their face, but and the, you didn't really get a good look at the third one. But they all kind of like had like a similar like feel to them. Yes. And this this one is this uh, the one that was Leah, or is this has the, a similar feel to Leah? Similar feel to Leah. Okay. I I only wonder just to see what uh, she looks like to James there. Maybe uh, she just wanna... looks like herself. Yeah, to us maybe. Well, I mean, if he's here, does that mean he's like? A scion or like magician or something, or did the guy mm-hmm. just let him in? I don't know. You'd think scions would know how to function with these sort of encounters, but then again, there's there's us. So hey, now we're doing perfectly fine and good work. Yeah. So how do we want to play this then? And, and like we're probably shouting this conversation to each other, being just this close with all the music going. It's not like anyone will hear it. So. Yeah. So how how do you want to play it then? Uh, do we just want to grab them or do we want to... Let's buy them a drink and just talk to them. I don't know. Honestly, Nick, you're probably better at this than I am. When I try these sort of things, it usually ends up in a fight. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess. And Nick is kind of just thinking about like how he's probably not as good as Jesse thinks about in this sort of situation because he felt flat on his butt last time he encountered one of these fey things. All right. Uh, do they have drinks in front of them? Yeah, you do see a couple of drinks. It looks like they, you see a couple of drinks in front of them. You would definitely see like they're right now. They're like talking to amongst themselves right now, like uh, James and the uh, woman. Nick will take note of what those drinks are and go to the bar and order those same drinks. All right. So as soon as you order them, he, the guy looks at you and he just, you do know those are the, the the most expensive stuff, right? That's top uh, shelf stuff. Nick um, thinks about his pocket book for a second. He's like, is there a mid shelf version of it? And then the guy look, looks at you, and then looks at the, and looks towards like where he sees the uh, a blonde haired woman. He just the bartender just leans in, like, if you want to impress some, someone like that, you need the top shelf. But uh, just, no one's getting into it. They are intense. Yeah, we're we're old acquaintances. All right, how much? They think this off this off a number that definitely puts a hurt on your uh, wallet. Mm, maybe I could ask my mom for an allowance after this. As Nick uh, is like pulling like far too many twenties from his wallet. All right, so you got the drinks now. Back me up here, Jesse. Don't don't let me make any deals with them. Uh, all right, but I can't promise anything. If they join my fight club. <laughs> oh god. I gotta I gotta run a game with just all about Jesse's fight club. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. It'll be Jesse trying everyone not to kill themselves before the fight club actually starts. <laughs> Alright. So the two of you uh, you, you, you walk off to the uh corner booth i guess i was thinking of just walking right up to him <laughs> yeah, yeah they're like a, they're, yeah. they're in a corner booth that's what i meant hey and actually as you get close to them you notice like the the sound it's like what you sort of what we experienced back at the club with leah 
like the, the sound, everything sort of seems to fade a bit. Like it's almost like there's a, a wall between you and the noise. Oh, my ears probably pop a little bit, which is probably an interesting uh, sensation considering how loud it was. And they kind of just like burst that little bubble. Hey, it's um my friends, uh, James and Leah's sister, right? And he sets the two drinks down next to him. Uh, you see the you see the 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 blonde woman just, just sort of like hooks her arm around James's shoulder. Oh, it's you! You're the little knight that Leah wanted to get their hands on. Was I was so dis- I Oh, you have no idea how much it amused me that you just ran off into the night after after they did their best to try and woo you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful. Uh, uh, she, ne- she Leah's been needing something to put knock them down a peg. Sir Nick uh, kind of visibly reacts, uh, relaxes quite a bit because that was not the response that he was expecting. Yeah, uh, it's always interesting to see family brought down a peg or two when they think they're getting too tall, and then I slide the drinks to both of them. And then she just thank you, and she you see she like gestures toward you see she turns towards uh, uh, James, and she, you see like she nods her head. Then he takes the drink, and then once you look at him, you definitely see he he looks like he's got like a black eye. It's faded a lot by this point. You definitely tell like he had one though. It, it, it's definitely looks uh, was p- quite the big one when you see him what a couple days ago. And you see he looks. Thin, like you see, like you see, you see his collarbone sticking out from his under his skin. His eyes have heavy, heavy rings under them, and you see, like he, he is like a. You see, like the arm around him is just sort of like pushing him into her, into her uh, side. Nick uh, kind of like bites his lip a little bit when taking all this in, and kind of like looks back at um, Jesse, like and like his face shows a little bit of worry. But by the time he turns it back again, he's all smiles again, trying to do his best. Gary impersonation. So James, uh, what brings you to the pit? I he he just he, again he sort of like looks to looks, looks towards uh, the blonde woman. She nods at him again. He he just I'm here supporting her wherever she goes. All right, that's fair. Very honorable of you. Yes, yes. Uh, I, try, I try to keep up, try to be honorable. Yeah. The two of you come here often, Nick says, and he's gonna pat um, James on the back a bit. And when he does. I'm going to try to use my lover's intuition. And I looked it up, and you get the one uh, question for free, but I can roll my knack skill to okay. spend a success in order to get multiple questions. Remember right, that yeah. we have a bunch of stuff, mo- pool, momentum, momentum in our pool. All right, so for your first free question, what do you want to ask? First off, I want to ask uh, the most important one. Who would the character James like to be romantically involved with? And second of, uh, if well, if I get it, then I'll ask uh, more questions. All right. So when you when you see that in your head, you sort of get the image of Lisa for a bit. We also see a, a, a couple of the girls, sort of like they're a bit hazier in his head. Like, like Lisa is the most clearly defined one in his head. You see a couple other girls like sort of pop up in your head. And uh, what would you like me to uh, roll for the other one? I'd say empathy or persuasion. Um, just the skill, or do do you do int- attributes as well? I think it's just the skill. Let me double check the rules. Just yeah, just the skill. Just the skill. Yeah, you may roll your next skill, and okay, all right. So I'll, I'll I'll use one extra die of momentum for this. All right. And I got one success. So uh, the other question is. I already asked who he would like to be romantically involved with. I want to say, who is the character romantically involved with? Okay, with that, he is the big thing is just immediately just the woman to the bl- nice blonde woman. Hmm. So this is all going through Nick's heads. Like, uh, it's a very, like, Nick has a very high empathy score. And this is a very, very uh, interesting story, slash, very. He he can really empathize it to uh, to use the term. Okay, uh, so uh, the, the ice blonde woman made answers for him. Like, oh, he's been coming here practically every night. It's the best atmosphere, honestly. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, it's it's sure energetic. It 
And as you see that, like you see like a, a couple of, there's a fight breaking out behind you. And it's a pretty bloody fight too. You see, you see at one point, like a, it looks like a finger flies off somewhere. You see Jesse staring. I, I give him the nod. <laughs> the nod that says basically go for it. Jesse goes for it. Okay. So I, I won't make you roll. You, you just dive in there. It's, it's a bloody fight. It's all that matters. All right. So yeah, you, so yeah, you just, you're, you're just fighting off. And, and so Nick, back to you. So we're kind of like dodging the occasional punch thrown at someone close to us, some in the, in the booth, but uh, continue the conversation. Yeah, uh, lots of lots of energy here. I might get tiring if you're coming here every night, though. Oh, don't worry about that. This is last nice moment. I never get tired. And Nick will kind of um, look at her. as like, yeah, I can, I can see that. Cause yeah, she, she looks at her. She looks perfectly fine. Like she just rolled out of bed with a, you know, a fresh, fresh sleep. She, she looks amazing. It's not you that I'm worried about. And Nick will kind of like stare her down. And then she, like, she, you see, she just looks right at you. And she, as she like moves her hand over to like cup uh, James's face. Don't worry about him too much. If he can't handle it, then he shouldn't have asked for it. You should know this. Has your your mother taught you anything? I'll turn to James, who's probably in a daze. What did you ask for? Oh, you do, oh, it's not, I suppose, asking is a bit strong. It's more that he wanted some companionship, and I gave it to him. Isn't that right? She, she just cups his face and turns it towards her. She gives a little peck on the cheek. How does James react to all this? He's just sitting there quietly, just sort of staring off into nothing. So I'm getting just like this worse feeling that he, like, like Nick earlier a few nights ago, like doesn't know what he was actually asking for. And he's probably got tricked into this sort of thing. And what exactly are you getting out of it, miss? Oh, I'll get him for a year. It's not my fault. He can't really handle my lifestyle for a whole year, but that's the promise he made. I see. And it's just, he just sort of looks, he just sort of smiles at you. You're, you're, you're plotting something, aren't you? Oh, this is just like the stories my grandmother told me. Oh, oh she, I, she would always have so much fun just leading you knights along on your little quests, trying to save everyone who da- dreamt into every little fairy ring. I don't get, I, I never understood why. You know we're here. You know we're a part of the world. And you're not supposed, you know you need us. For us, you wouldn't have the wonderful times of spring. You wouldn't have the flowers. You wouldn't have the frost. Oh, I swear, I don't get why you, you get, you reap the rewards. Why do you care about the costs so much? Look, lady, I can barely balance a checkbook, but I know about the costs that your kind have. And then she just yeah. smiles even deeper at that. Oh, I, d- oh, d- just tell me, did you go into that knowing that she couldn't, Leah couldn't fulfill her end of the bargain because I, I gotta tell you, I, I, I have to applaud you for this. It is rare that a human can make a deal that we can't uphold. Like, I, did you plan that or was that truly just fortuitous? I rarely plan anything like that. And then she just and sort of, they see the, the ice bomb moment just sort of leans back and just, I thought so. It's all, oh, I, I keep on telling Leah. Oh. They always try to have a plan for everything. I just tell them, you gotta account for just the stupidity of human. Nick is visibly getting a bit angry at this point, and he looks over and sees Jesse probably rolling around the floor with some guy's, like, arm in this crazy arm bar or something, and, like, he looks back up and it's just, like, his eyes are getting intense, and he takes some... takes his hand, moves it across the table and picks up the drink that he got for her and takes a drink from it and sets it back down in front of him. At that point, she actually, she looks a bit irritated at you. It's like, that was rude. No need for rudeness. We were being polite. I think we lost polite when you imply that humans were stupid. Nick says, then realizes the words that came out of his mouth just moments before. Do you truly want to go down this path, knight? I think that it's time that you let poor James go and get some rest. Okay. And what would you give for me if I to exchange for this? I'd allow you the same courtesy of taking a rest when you thought you needed it. Huh. I told you already, I don't get tired. 
I'm sure my friends and I can tire you out. Jesse. All right. <laughs> yeah. Our uh, our little fay friend here doesn't think that she can get tired. All right, lady. Boy, do I have the organization for you. <laughs> <laughs> As Jesse just drops this guy's hair and his forehead smashes into the ground. As soon as Jesse's just panting, there's just blood flowing from him. Okay, so I have this idea, and it's going to happen soon, right after we deal with this big thing. It's going to happen right after the uh, Thunderbird migration. We're going to get a bunch of supernatural folks, right, with all their ancient grudges and everything. And then we're going to fight. It's going to be a tournament. It's going to be big. And it's going to be for... Personal glory only. Okay. Now, I don't know if you want to join personally or if you want to, like, I don't know, send in a champion. That's fine. But I already have Arthurian Knights, two Athenian, you know, people from the Northern Pantheon. And all these folks are going to be there and it's going to be glorious. They're going to sing songs about it. Ooh, champion, you say? And then she like turns to uh, James. What do you think, James? Tell, think about being my champion. Go out and win me glories. I could give you my give you my favor, and you'd be like a little knight and attorney, doing it for the favor of his beloved princess. At that point, you see James sort of like snap out of his daze. He just beef, beef. that that sounds that that'd be great. Yeah, that, that, that sounds great. Yes, but unfortunately. Uh, your mistress is already engaged herself, for I call you out at said tournament, and I'm going to invoke my call-out uh, ability on her. Ah, yes. So well, for those listening, since Sir Nick, he, he, we, we sort of made a, a homebrew, I guess, pantheon for him. So for his thing is that he can call out one person in a one-on-one, either like a, for like a one-on-one, like a meeting or a duel or whatever. So you're calling her out to basically face you on the, in the tourney. Yeah, basically, I I want her to basically leave uh, James alone and let him finally get some rest. And it kind of would be the same deal. Like, uh, he's kind of offering in, in kind of a way, like weird mystical way that he take on his debt or something if uh, he loses. But yeah, yeah. And th- yeah, at that point, it's... you definitely see like her. She gets mad at that. that she, you definitely like her, like her face. Her face still looks pretty but it's like a, the, a much more inhuman edge comes to it and it's just see it like her, te- her lips from back on a snarl and she says fine you want to play it like that knight fine but know this well, when we do meet I promise you you will regret it understand and unlike Leah I don't particularly care who if it's just you I hurt or the ones around you. I mean, when you break someone's arm, it doesn't really matter whose arm it is, as long as you just, the sound is satisfying either way. Got well, it? Well, I think my friend and I would both agree, it very matters which arm it is you break. So, for the time being, leave James alone. Fine. I'll see you at your tourney. When is this tourney? I and looked it, to Jesse. <laughs> At this point, you definitely tell, like, I'll just say this right now. You know that if it's not something really soon, she's going to run poor James is even more ragged than he already is. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to. Um, two days. No, wait. When are we fighting the guy? Oh, uh, you know, it's, past, oh. it's, you know that you have, you know. The, the, so, so it's, bef- I have to put it so it's before that. So basically, yeah, you have tomorrow, essentially. Okay, so, yeah. Tomorrow evening at dusk. Excellent. I'll be there. Now. I sure hope you know what you're doing, Nick. At that point, well, you I... see. Uh, at that point, you see uh, the blonde woman just get up and just sort of drag James with her. She's like, "Good night." Yeah, yeah. Please get, for the get some rest, and I promise you, our our match will be one to remember. Then she just stalks out with James dragging behind her. Nick, are you allowed to hit girls? I don't think that's really a girl. Jesse sort of looks with a quizzical uh, look on his face. I mean, she, I guess, can be take over whatever form she wants to take. It's a bit more fluid in the Fey world. Okay. Well, not my pantheon, so not really my business. Though, 
I really, really wish that, you know, I could have fought her. But I understand that this is personal for you, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make some calls. I really wish, I really wish you could have fought her, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And so, uh, yeah, actually, as soon as you sort of... Uh, as soon as like, she leaves the, the bubble of that was quiet that was sort of holding the sound back sort of bursts and then like the you know, it's le- just loud again i'll push the other really expensive drink that i bought for james over to jesse um, i guess we shouldn't let these go to waste yeah uh, and you, you see jesse just messaging people about the tournament or like the fight club thing I know if he's he's not sure if he's going to call it a tournament or like a fight club at this point. It's just like a spur of the moment thing. So, <laughs> fight club colon tournament of champions. Yeah, and speaking uh, of which, as you know, as you do one your drinks, and you see one of the guys you fought with, he he has got like you know dark blue skin, so, sort of looks a bit mummified ish. Then he just sort of comes up to you and just says, "Giant Frost, Giant, you fight good, and you did as well, my friend." If you want to have a sanctioned fight tomorrow at dusk with some very interesting people. And I write, write in Sir Nick's castle's address. Because I assume that's where it's going to take place, like in the courtyard. Because that's just the proper place to have a tournament. All right. I, I guess given short notice. <laughs> yeah, given the short notice, we'll have to make do. All right. So, yeah, the guy, the, the, the blue skinned man sort of takes it and then leaves do you do you do it's not a call for more fighters or you just let that one guy go for your fight club no i mean i'm gonna tell him like always like if he has any interesting people he knows who know how to fight so just bring them with or like to send to call me okay and then i just have gorman gander whisper in my ear whether they think whether he thinks they're worthy or not all right, so yeah, with that, I'm going to say like, yeah, the, 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 you know, the word starts to spread around the bar, the, around the pit. So yeah, people, you know, various things just sort of come up to you and just start talking to you about whether or not they want to join in the fight club. I love this. Well, uh, I don't, I don't have to win. I just had to, I guess, beat her up, right, Jesse? What are the rules for this? All right, so this is really interesting. The rules will be: you can't kill your opponent. You have to make sure your opponent surrenders, okay? If you knock your opponent onto conscious, if you kill him, if you do anything else, you lose. You have to make him surrender. Any means are allowed. Magic, combat, whatever. There'll be a designated area, which will be your courtyard. Oh, I gotta get someone to mow the lawn. Oh, wait, actually, it's, it's Arizona. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't have a lawn. You have rocks and some shrubs. We gotta order some more peat gravel. All right. You know, you know what I really hate, Nick? Since uh, it's so short notice and I'll have to do all the organizing, I won't be able to fight. I'm sure we can work something out. I won't be able to fight, Nick. What if, uh, uh, do we know anyone who is good at event planning? Uh, I think Ikaru would kill us. Yeah. Maybe I can call Tiffany. She's like, she does all this, uh, mediation stuff, right? She'd be good at this. Yeah, I mean, hmm. I'm just going to say that we need a skilled mediator. I'm not yeah. going to mention the specifics. <laughs> uh, we could pay her for her services. It should only take a couple hours. Right? It's right. perfect. Uh, let's see what time she's... Oh, yeah. Leave her a message. See what time she's open tomorrow night and see if she does house calls. Yeah, Jesse uh, does write her. For all right, like so a group therapy. He writes in group therapy session. All right. So do you, do you leave her a message or are you just going to call it directly? <laughs> I assume it's just going to go to voicemail once she sees that Jesse is calling. I'll, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a correct. Yeah. <laughs> we, ta- we might have to charge a small entry fee to cover her fee. Yeah, but I'm sure that, that won't be sense. a problem. Everyone you know, money or favors, I, yeah. either are and either you, are good. But you hear Goldman Gunders, boss. What about the prize to the winner? Prize? Well, besides the glory, of course. Mm, maybe we can find that chupacabra thing. Or um, uh, trying to think what what's valuable that's not a piece of Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> what's valuable to a fighter, of course, is to fight someone important. I can I can ask my mom if she can arrange a fight with like a real ice giant for the winner. I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to get on my bike and I hope I'm going to make it in time. You have fun, Nick. I have to go. Oh, okay. And although technically, I guess Jesse could hop into the world tree and send a message through the squirrel. That's actually probably way closer. That's only yeah, that, that would be more. much easier than. Well, it's only a two hour drive. Eh, that's fair enough. I guess, I guess personal is better in this case. Jesse will just go. I guess he'll sleep during the day and wake up near dusk. All right. Nick so has to go back and uh, tell all his retainers that hey, they got prepped the grounds for a bike club tomorrow night. Just call it a tournament since it's a castle. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's probably what he's gonna do. All right. So um, Nick, you head back to uh, get the castle ready for a tourney, and so yeah, Jesse, you you drive off in the middle in the night to uh, meet your mother. So yeah, it's 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 the middle of the night by the time you finally reach the uh, the mountain that you saw her last. So yeah, Jesse hops off his bike and he almost like runs straight towards it towards the mountain like once he's there just sprints right. mom mom <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah you, you cross the again like it, you when higher up the mountain you get the the frostier and snowier it gets until you reach like the cave where you saw her last time and then you, you see her like she emerges from the cave yes i'm gonna need a favor from you right could you arrange a fight with an ice giant. Mm. I suppose. Doesn't that could, for you? You could, I could definitely introduce you. So this is a way to introduce you to the others. So I don't know. I don't. There. I do have some friendly eaters, but a lot of them consider me less favorably after my marriage to one of the Acer. Right. Well. So the situation's like this. There's going to be a giant festival dedicated to combat that I'm organizing. I want the winner to have the opportunity to fight a giant, mm. right? It's not to the death or anything, but yeah, that's what I need. All right, a giant fight to the, not fighting to the death. Well, if it was fight to the death, I could just tell you some of that. I know a lot of, no, I don't know a lot of giants who wouldn't really mind seeing die. All right, I must admit, son, of all the favors I thought you might ask of me, this is not one of them. I applaud <clears throat> you for surprising me. Yeah. I'll- Take that as a compliment of not being so bound to fate or something. Good. So, strength, fire, courage. I know someone who will be. I, I know I have. I do have a favor. I'll be able to call in for this. Yes. In return, I will ask you for something. Oh well, yeah, I expected as much. So, my son, there. I've been hearing the rumblings. Loki is in, t- in the is in the valley. Yeah, and he's got the father of knives. Father of knives. Apparently can uh, cut through anything or something I think like I, that. I think I've heard of that. It is something old, even by the gods' standard. I think it was from a long, long time ago, from when men would live in caves and things, that they would believe the, the knife was the first one, that it brought them knowledge of things, of how to cut and what to cut. If you can, bring it to me. Sure. Yeah. I'll do it, and I and then she like she like looks at you. Just promise me not to turn it the entire valley into like an icicle. As nice as it would be, I don't think the other gods would take kindly to that again. No, the the other gods do not care for Loki's mischief. All right, very well, son. I will get to see who I can contact with. Then she see she like turns to like a, a wall, like she goes deeper into the cave, and you see like similar to like what you saw in the mall, like. Like part of the part of the case sort of like falls backwards, and you see like you see like a tree on on the other side of the walls, sort of you know, hanging in space almost. And then you and then you see like she goes through the entrance and seals back up. All right, Do- Gorman Gander. Uh, so you think we can safely assume we'll have a frost giant fight ready? I think yes, boss. Frost giants mm. are always ready fights. Nice, my people. Quite literally, I guess. Anyway, let's get back. We need to make the pairings fair. Part of the attraction of Scion is how the hands of fate can dictate plot and propel the action forward. Encounter-based games are interesting ways to experience tales in bite-sized chunks. If you enjoy this type of storytelling, check out our back catalog for games like 13th Age, Clips Phase, or Exalted for more encounter-based fun.